Yahuwah. I will call upon Yahuwah, who is worthy to be praised. So shall I be saved from mine enemies. Rise up, O Yahuwah. Let thine enemies be scattered. Let them that hate thee flee from before thee. Hallelujah! Praise Yahuwah. Praise Yahuwah. I'd like to welcome everyone to Kodesh Nation into our new moon celebration. Hallelujah. This is the first day of the second month. Brothers and sisters, hallelujah. And what I'm going to be talking about today, the lesson for today is going to be entitled From Mountain to Hill. From Mountain to Hill. Hallelujah. And in this lesson, brothers and sisters, we're going to see how accurately the Most High foretold the condition that his people, the children of Yashra'al, the children of Yahuda, would be in even up to this day. Hallelujah. From mountain to hill. And so we're going to begin with Yermiyahu, which is Jeremiah chapter 50. Jeremiah chapter 50. I'm going to read two verses to you. Now, the setting of this chapter is the pronouncing of judgment upon Babylon. And this was spoken during the time of the Babylonian captivity. But what makes, the, what makes this chapter here, chapter 50 and chapter 51, what makes these chapters very unique and somewhat mysterious is that it speaks not only of the judgment that came upon ancient Babylon, ancient Babel, back in the days of the captivity of our forefathers, but also it speaks of a future Babylon because it speaks of events which have yet to happen. If you read earlier in this chapter, it talks about Babylon being destroyed just like Saddam and Amorah, leaving no inhabitant. Brothers and sisters, that hasn't happened yet. It says that the, uh, the Arabian will not pitch his tent there anymore. And there's Arabians pitching their tents in modern day uh, Babylon in a, in a physical geographical sense. That's talking about Iraq, geographically speaking. But as far as modern day Babylon, we, we know that there is a mystery Babylon, which is the mother of harlots. Now, if Babylon is a mystery, if she is called mystery Babylon, what that tells us is that we wouldn't be able to identify her just by looking at her name. We see Babylon, oh, it must be talking about Iraq, just because modern day Iraq geographically corresponds to ancient Babylon. No, it's a mystery. It's mystery Babylon. Hallelujah. Praise Yahuwah. And so, brothers and sisters, that's why we believe that mystery Babylon includes the United States of America. Let me say that mystery Babylon today includes but is not limited to the United States of America. Praise Yahuwah. So we believe that we are in the domain, even today, us. We are in the domain of Mystery Babylon today, brothers and sisters. And so much of what is written in Yermiyahu chapters 50 and 51 pertains unto where we are actually living today. See, we're told that the children of Yashra'al and the children of Yahuda would be oppressed together here in modern day Babylon now. Said, they that took them captive held them fast and would not let them go. Praise Yahuwah. And it's interesting, it talks about those taking us captive, holding us fast, not letting us go. Now, those of you that have been in school, and do you remember when you were taught about the Emancipation Proclamation 
and how that ended slavery. It, it legally ended slavery in the United States of America. Do you all remember being taught that? About the Emancipation Proclamation legally end, ending slavery in the United States of America. Brothers and sisters, that's a lie. That is not true. Slavery was not legally ended in the United States of America. What they did was that they, um, they allowed slavery now for prison punishment. So in order to, in order to punish uh, prisoners, they allowed the provision of slavery to continue. And then what they did was they ended up framing a lot of our forefathers, framing them for crimes that they did not commit in order to keep them in that perpetual state of slavery. So there's, there's an excellent book that um, chronicles what I'm talking about. It's called Slavery by Another Name. By a woman named Michelle Alexander. It's a great book. I mean, I recommend it. I, I didn't intend to get on here and plug a book, but just the concept of what I'm telling you about how that slavery has continued even up to this very day in this country. Today, it's called private prisons, and how the private prison system is exploiting, especially our people, because that's most of who you see in these private prisons and if you really do your research and how these prisons are run where the aim of these prisons is not to reform the prisoners send them back to society as good law-abiding citizens the aim of these private prison corporations is to make sure that their shareholders are happy in other words make sure their shareholders are making money and so in order for their shareholders to make money, they have to operate at maximum capacity. And they put pressure on these police departments and governments to fill the prisons up so that they can operate at maximum capacity. And you know what? If they can't fill the prisons up with people that are um, genuinely committing crimes, they'll frame people. They'll push people into plea bargain deals. They'll do whatever it takes to pack those prisons out. And so that's modern day slavery, brothers and sisters. Especially people being put in there that shouldn't be there. Sure, there are people in prison that should be uh, in prison. And I say that from a worldly standpoint because the whole idea of prisons, that's a heathen, that's a heathen concept anyway. We don't see that in the laws and the statutes of uh, Yahuwah. We see that there are, there are certain crimes where there is a swift judgment. They had capital crimes. Adultery, homosexuality, kidnapping. I mean, there are things that they just dealt with on the spot. They killed you. And then there were certain things that just demanded a recompense. You stole something. They didn't put you in prison for 20 years. They just made you pay it back. And if you couldn't pay it back, then you had to be sold into slavery to work it off. But we don't see a, a prison system within Yah's laws and commandments. So we know that that's something that's of the heathen anyway. But at the same time, my whole point is that slavery continues even to this day in the United States of America. So we are still in a state of captivity. Praise you. A lot of people don't like to see it like that, you know, that just because it's and we have to look at our forefathers and the captivities that our forefathers went through. Not every um, not every captivity that we went into was the hard like the hard bondage of Egypt. We see even in Babylon, our people lived in cities, they built houses, they lived semi normal lives, even though they're still on the bottom of society. So it wasn't the, the hard Egyptian bondage all the time. So we don't necessarily have to be in hard Egyptian bondage 24-7 in order to say that we are in a state of captivity. Hallelujah. And so in Yirmiyahu, Jeremiah chapter 50, verses 6 and 7. And that's the context we're talking about in modern day Babylon. It says, my people have been wandering sheep. 
Their shepherds have led them astray, turning them away on the mountains. They have gone from mountain to hill. They have forgotten their resting place. All who found them have devoured them. And their adversaries have said, we are not guilty because they have sinned against Yahuwah, the home of righteousness, in the expectation of their fathers, Yahuwah. Now, it's interesting that though it talks about us going from mountain to hill, forgetting our resting place, and we're going to get more into that uh, in a few minutes here. But it says, they that found them have devoured them. Now, what's that talking about? Devouring the lost sheep. It's talking about exploitation. And brothers and sisters, who is the most exploited nation of people in this country today? I mean, who has uh, made more money for the dominant culture in this country and has received, you know, proportionally has received so little of that same money? That's what's called exploitation. I mean, ever since we got here, we were an exploited people, and Yah made sure of it, because that is part of the curses. If you read the Birakoth, or the blessings, and the curses of Deuteronomy chapter 28, before he begins talking about the blessings, he said that if you will keep my commandments, I will set you high above all nations of the earth. But when he speaks of the curses, the curses can be summed up in one word, and that is subjugation. You will be subject to all nations of the earth. You will be on the bottom. You will be at their mercy. They'll be able to basically do whatever they want with you. And that's where we see the devouring of the wandering sheep. The exploitation, the economic exploitation, the um, exploitation for entertainment, the sexual exploitation, more so than any nation of people in this country that has happened to our people, the children of Yashra'al, the children of Yahuda. And I'm sure the same is the case worldwide, but we know that to be the case in our country. And so remember that, that it talks about the wandering sheep while going from mountain to hill. Now, the next thing I want to look at is Yekezkel, which is Ezekiel chapter 34. Ezekiel chapter 34. We're going to see a similar statement here. And we're going to start at the top. Yekezkel, Ezekiel chapter 34, verse 1. And the word of Yahuwah came to me, saying, Son of man, Naba, or prophesy, against the shepherds of Yashra'al, Naba, and say to them, Thus said the Adon Yahuwah to the shepherds, Woe to the shepherds of Yashra'al, who have been feeding themselves, should not the shepherds feed the flock. You eat the fat, and you put on the wool, you slaughter the fatlings, you do not feed the flock. You have not strengthened the weak, nor have you healed the sick, nor bound up the broken, nor brought back the string, nor sought what was lost, but you have ruled them with might and harshness. And they were scattered because there is no shepherd, and they became food for all the beasts of the field. When they were scattered, my sheep wandered through all the mountains and on every high hill. And my sheep were scattered over all the face of the earth, and no one was seeking or searching for them. Therefore, you shepherds, hear the word of Yahuwah. And so it goes on rebuking the shepherds of Yashra'al, because it's because of these false shepherds that the children of Yashra'al, the children of Yahuda, throughout the centuries, have been devoured by the beasts of the field because they were sheep with no shepherd. Because not only were, were the people of this world exploiting them, but their own shepherds were exploiting them. And there's no other people in this country that that is true of but our people. I mean, look at our people being exploited in the religious realm. Where, look at the amount of money that we give to these churches 
And uh, we look at these palaces that these preachers live in. We look at these vehicles that they drive and we compare it to where their congregants live and kind of cars that that they drive and we see how uh, we see the condition of the communities. We don't see vast improvement in the con condition of the communities, but at the same time, we see the preachers increasing. Because there is no other group of people who is known for exploiting their own than us, brothers and sisters. That's talking about the false shepherds of Yashra'al and Yahuda devouring the sheep just like the beasts of the field just like the governments and the powers of this world that the shepherds were doing it as well praise Yahuwah so in Yekezkiel 34 that Yah is rebuking the false shepherds and he is saying that I myself am going to go forth and find these lost sheep and I will be their shepherd and I will lead them to green pastures and so this is a foretelling of the Besorah talking about how Yah was going to intervene in the affairs of mankind. Praise Yahuwah. And how he was going to go forth and get his lost sheep. Hallelujah. So from mountain to hill, what is he talking about? Going from mountain to hill. Now we envision a flocks of sheep just literally going up and down mountains and hills and wondering and not, where, not knowing where to go. Praise Yahuwah. But we know that spiritually speaking, the lost sheep, it's talking about the children of Yashra'al and the children of Yahuda. So, spiritually speaking, what are the mountains and hills? What is he talking about there? Praise Yahuwah. So let's turn to Yeshayahu, Isaiah chapter 2. And the scriptures are going to point us in the right direction with this, give us some clues as to what this is talking about. From mountain to hill. Now, Isaiah chapter 2, starting in verse 10. Enter into the rock and hide in the dust because of the reverence of Yahuwah and the splendor of his excellency. The lofty looks of man shall be humbled and the pride of men shall be bowed down and Yahuwah alone shall be exalted in that day. For Yahuwah of hosts has a day against all that is proud and lofty, against all that is lifted up, so that it is brought low against all the cedars of Lebanon that are high and lifted up, against all the oaks of Bashan, against all the high mountains, and against all the hills that are lifted up, against every lofty tower, and against every strong wall, and against all the ships of Tarshish, and against all the desirable craft, and the loftiness of man shall be bowed down, and the pride of men shall be brought low, and Yahuwah alone shall be exalted in that day. So, do you think Yahuwah is going to be concerned about knocking down some tall trees during that time? Or high mountains? And I believe that's literally going to happen too, but that's representing something. Praise Yahuwah. It talks about the loftiness of man and how the loftiness of man is going to be bowed down. Everything that's lifted up is going to be brought low. Hallelujah. In that day. Hallelujah. All right, turn to chapter 40 of the same book. Yeshayahu chapter 40. Isaiah 40. I'm going to read verses 3 through 5. The word reads, The voice of one crying in the wilderness, Prepare the way of Yahuwah. Make straight in the desert a highway for our Allahim. Let every valley be raised. And every mountain and hill made low. And the steep ground shall become level. And the rough places smooth. And the esteem of Yahuwah shall be revealed. And all flesh shall see it together. All flesh together shall see it. For the mouth of Yahuwah has spoken. Hallelujah. And so we know that this was stated uh, uh, concerning Yochanan the Immerser, also known as John the Baptist, when he came on the scene, preparing the way of Yahuwah. Hallelujah. And so what we are going to do is that uh, we are going to, uh, even, as, even as Yochanan the Immerser prepared the way for Yahuwah as he sent his son, the Mashiach, 
to in his name you know to do his works before the people that we are going to go through some statements that the son of Elohim himself had said because this here this this uh raising of the valleys and bringing down uh, of the mountains and hills see this was part of the work of the preparing of the way of Yahuwah. This was part of the work of the Besorah. So we're going to see what Yahusha himself had to say when he came on the scene. Hallelujah. Praise Yahuwah. Now turn to Yermiyahu again. Jeremiah. We're going to go to Jeremiah 51. And uh, Jeremiah 51. We're still talking about Babel. Judgment upon Babel. Judgment upon Babylon, modern day Babylon, because that's what most of this is talking about. Jeremiah 51. Verse 25, the word reads, See, I am against you. Now talking about Babel, Babylon. Listen to this language here. See, I am against you, O destroying mountain, who destroys all the earth, declares Yahuwah. And I shall stretch out my hand against you, and I shall roll you down from the rocks and make you a burnt mountain. And they shall not take from you a stone for a corner, nor a stone for a foundation, but you shall be a waste forever, declares Yahuwah. Now, when ancient Babylon fell, they were not a waste forever. There's still people that dwelt there. They were just overtaken by the Medes and the Persians, and people still lived their lives there. This is talking about a Babylon that is going to be destroyed forever. This is talking about modern-day Babylon, the destruction of mystery Babylon, brothers and sisters. Praise Yahuwah. And Yah said that, He said, I'm against you, O destroying mountain. So we know that, that mountains include uh, governmental powers. Talking about the powers of men. Praise Yahuwah, the governmental powers, because he's calling uh, Babel here a destroying mountain. Now, getting back to what I was saying about Yochanan the Immerser preparing the way of Yahuwah, and every, every mountain and hill being laid low, every valley being exalted, Praise Yahuwah. Let's, let's hear what Yahusha had to say. If we turn to Matthew chapter 23, we're going to look at some statements of his. And within these statements, we're going to see the intent of Yahuwah in, in his redemption for his people. Matthew chapter 23. Now, in Matthew chapter 23, Yahusha, he's taking note of the uh, Pharisees and scribes and how they, were, how they were doing these things to be seen of men and how they were exalting themselves. And I'm going to pick up in verse 8, it says, But you do not be called rabbi, for one is your teacher, Hamashiach, and you are all brothers. Because, see, they like to be called rabbi. Rabbi had these flattering titles. Verse 9, and call none on earth your father, for one is your father who is in the Shamaim. Neither be called leaders, for one is your leader, Hamashiach. But the greatest among you shall be your servant, and whoever exalts himself shall be humbled, and whoever humbles himself shall be exalted. Did you see that? Did you see what or who is going to be laid low, and what or who is going to be raised up, exalted? Yahusha tells us. Praise Yahuwah. Now turn to Luke chapter 14. Luke chapter 14. We're going to begin in verse 7. The word reads, And he spoke a parable to those who were invited when he noted how they chose the best places, saying to them, When you are invited by anyone to a wedding feast, do not sit down in the best place, lest one more distinguished than you be invited by him. And he who invited you and him come and say to you, Give this one place. Then you begin with shame to take the last place. Rather, when you are invited, go and sit down in the last place, so that when he who invited you comes, he shall say to you, Friend, come up higher. Then you shall have esteem in the presence of those who sit at the table with you. 
For everyone who is exalting himself shall be humbled, and he who is humbling himself shall be exalted. There it is again. Praise Yahuwah. All right, back to Matthew now. We're going to go to Matthew chapter 19. Matthew 19. Matthew chapter 19, and we are going to start in verse 27. The word reads, Then Kepha answering said to him, See, we have left all and followed you. What then shall we have? Yahusha said to them, Truly I say to you, when the Ben of Adam, the son of man, sits on the throne of his esteem, you who have followed me in the restoration shall also sit on twelve thrones, judging the twelve tribes of Yashra'al. And everyone who has left houses or brothers or sisters or father or mother or wife or children or lands, for my name's sake, shall receive a hundredfold and shall inherit everlasting chai, everlasting life. But many who are first shall be last and the last first. See that? Many who are first shall be last and the last first. This is with the coming in of the kingdom. Praise Yah. All right, Luke chapter 13. Luke chapter 13. Luke 13, we're going to start in verse 23. The word reads, And someone said to him, Adonai, are there few who are being saved? And he said to them, strive to enter in through the narrow gate, because many, I say to you, shall seek to enter in and shall not be able. When once the Adon of the house has risen up and shut the door, and you begin to stand outside and knock at the door, saying, Adonai, Adonai, open for us. And he shall answer and say to you, I do not know you where you are from. <laughs> then you shall begin to say, we ate and drank in your presence, and you taught in our streets. But he shall say, I say to you, I do not know you where you are from. Depart from me, all you workers of unrighteousness. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth when you see Abraham and Yitzhak and Yaakov and all the Nebaim, or prophets, in the reign of Allahim, the kingdom of Allahim, and yourselves thrown outside. And they shall come from the east and from the west and from the north and from the south and sit down in the reign of Allahim and see there are last who shall be first and there are first who shall be last. So, brothers and sisters, when the kingdom comes in, there is going to be a total upsetting of the social order. I mean, there, there is going to be a, a major turning of the tables, as they say. And it, it's just like uh, great mountains and hills being brought low and valleys being exalted. The whole social landscape of this earth is going to be changed. That which is and that who is exalted in this world is coming down. And that which is laid low and made to be nothing in this world is coming up. And see, that's why that Yah says, come out of her, my people. That ye be not a partaker of her sins, that ye receive not of her plagues. To come out of this world. Stop trying to, to stake our claim in this world and advance in this world and, and be a part of this world because it's coming down. Because the world and the lust thereof shall pass away. But he that doeth the will of Yah abideth forever. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise Yahuwah. And so, getting back to what we're talking about, brothers and sisters, from mountain to hill in forgetting our resting place. That we are looking for answers. Our people, children of Yashra'al, children of Yahuda, so-called Negro, so-called colored, so-called black, in the United States of America, worldwide, yes, of course, but we're talking about us here. We're talking about what we're familiar with. We are looking for answers, not from Yah. We may say we are, because we're a religious people. We're a very religious people. Man, you can go to just about any one of us and say, hey, do you trust in the Lord? They say, oh, yes. Yes, we do. Because that's how we've been taught. We've been taught to talk like that. We've been taught to be religious. But see, our trust is not in Yah as a people collectively now. 
Our trust is in the mountains and the hills. Our trust is in these men and in these organizations that have been exalted by man. Not by Yah now. Praise Yahuwah. That are high and lifted up. And that's what we look to for our answers. Praise Yahuwah. And we don't realize that all of that is coming down because it's so impressive to our eyes. Praise Yahuwah. That's why we run to these mountains and to these hills. These leaders. These movements. Because we're looking for answers. We already know something's not quite right. Something's wrong. And we're looking for redemption. We're looking for answers. We're looking for a resting place. But we're looking for it in all the wrong places. We're running from mountain to hill. Praise Yahuwah. And see, the, just the modern day manifestation of this, brothers and sisters, it started after slavery was uh, officially and legally uh, ended, so to speak, even though we know that wasn't really the case. That we know that slavery did end for a lot of our people. Praise Yahweh, even though they kept it on the books and you know kept kept their little game going for many of us. Praise Yah. But many of the slaves were freed. And I, I was looking at a I was looking at something either today or yesterday that talked about in 1860, 99% of our people uh, worked for the Europeans. You know, or, or worked for the other nations. Let me just say that, because it's more than just the Europeans. Today, you know what percentage of our people work for the other nations? 98%. 1% in in, what, about 156 years? 99% in 1860, 98% in 2016. Still slaves. Rich slaves. Comfortable slaves, still slaves. Praise Yahuwah. And so, brothers and sisters, what took place after the Emancipation Proclamation and how that the, uh, the Republican Party at that time, and that's with, with uh, Abraham Lincoln, and how that they came into the South and they brought federal troops into the South and they gave all kind of protections to our people and open the doors for our people to get into politics and get political positions. And there, there was more or less a civil rights movement of that day. Back in the 1860s and 1870s, and our people started becoming more prominent and getting into governmental positions and started getting into business. And, and it was all uh, through the, the powers of these men. These politicians and you know the, these governments, it was the Republican Party that was doing this. But what happened was that I believe it was the election of 1876. Y'all research this on your own. Don't just take my word for it. But there was a great betrayal of our people. That there is a real tight race between the Democrats and the Republicans for who was going to uh, get the White House. And it was much disputed as far as... Um, you know, it looked like it was leaning on the side of the Republicans, but it was much disputed. A lot of Southern Democrats were upset about it. And so I believe it was Rutherford B. Hayes. And he made a compromise with the Democratic politicians. And so, and basically told them, if you just let us have this election, we'll pull the troops out of the South. You know, and we'll dismantle these things that we put in place. A lot of these punishments upon these Southern planters. And we will basically let you have your way with the Negroes and do what you want with them. And you know what? The Republican Party sold us out in that election of 1876. And that's, that's when they really started bearing down hard on our people with the black codes or the Jim Crow laws and the KKK really started forming and growing strong. And, and our people really started getting persecuted. To the point where it led to what's called the Great Migration, where we started getting out of the South and coming into these bigger cities because we thought there would be more opportunities for work and that we'd be treated better. And we, we came here, we, we came to the bigger cities, found we weren't treated that much better, found that there wasn't as much work as we thought, and we were stuck in ghettos. And guess what happened? We were cursed in the field, but we ran out of the South. And ended up being cursed in the city. 
See, we tried to run from the curses and we couldn't get away. Why? Because we didn't repent. Praise Yah. We thought it'd be so much better up north in these big cities. And then look at us now. Look at us now in the big cities in the north. Praise Yahuwah. Cursed in the city, cursed in the field. And see, brothers and sisters, we put our trust in these exalted men and we were let down. And you know what? Yah teaches us through the scripture, but he also teaches us through history. We did not learn our lesson. Because you know what? We're doing the exact same thing today. And see, here we are. We have government positions. We have our congressional black caucus. You know, and we have our black president, so to speak. You know, and, and here we are. We enjoy these freedoms from the civil rights movement. We think that this could never be taken away. We think that, that we could never go backwards as a country. This can only go forwards because of all the advances that were made. But you know what? We have to understand we are still trusting in those same mountains and hills that we did during the Reconstruction time that we did back in the 1870s. It's the same game we're in on. But see, what we're gambling on, what our people are gambling on, is that the devil's people are going to do us right this time and not do us wrong like they did before. So we're, we're, we're basically gambling on the devil himself to, to be good to us this time. Because that, that's, he's the one who pulls their strings. Praise Yahuwah. So we have forgotten our resting place. That's why we're running from mountain to hill. That if we're not running to the Democrats and liberals and, and all that, then we're running to these different movements. Egyptology, Pan-Africanism, 5%. Just, all, that, all that stuff is, is black new age. It's all it is. Basically telling you you're a god or you're a goddess. This is the new age movement with, with some shoe polish on it. You're a god. You're a goddess. That's all that junk is. And it's a lie from hell. And all it is, is it's keeping us cursed. Praise Yahuwah. And, and a lot of these so-called black movements out there, they're actually started and funded by white people. Because they know that that's the way they can control us. They're not going to start some movement and have these white faces and all that. No, no, no. They're smarter than that. These are intelligent people that are behind this stuff. And so they put some black faces out front, put, you know, call an organization black or African or this or that or whatever, but they're behind the scenes pulling the strings. They're the ones that are financing it. And just the, the whole aim is to keep us away from the truth. Get us into this, get us into that. Just keep us away from the truth. As long as these people don't repent and turn back to the Torah, doesn't matter what you have them do. Doesn't matter what direction you have them go this way and that way. Just keep them from the truth. And so that's why we're getting into all this. We're gods. We're gods. If we're gods, I can worry in the condition that we're in. You see, I mean, if you're a god, get yourself out of the curses then. Praise Yahuwah. See, it's, it's a lie from hell. It's, it's all it is. is this new age. Praise Yahuwah. But, but they put an Afrocentric spin on it so they can control us. Because they knew they couldn't just get us with their regular white New Age movement that they got out there for these middle class people that are into all their crystals and all that stuff. Now, they're not going to get enough of us with that. So they had, they, they had to, to tweak it a bit in order to get us into the same movement. The same movement that the serpent started in the Garden of Eden. You shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. That's, right. That's a 6,000 year old movement. Right. And we're still being fooled. Right. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise Yahuwah. Going from mountain to hill. Praise Yah. We, we had our trust in Martin Luther King Jr. Shot him dead. We had our trust in Malcolm X. Shot him dead. Had our, had our trust in, in Marcus Garvey. They brought him down. Praise Yahuwah. And so, it, it, brothers and sisters, see, Yah is making sure that these mountains and hills are being brought down before our face. And I really do believe it, that these people who, who our people are putting our trust in politically in this day and time, I really believe there's another betrayal coming. And there needs to be. Because if there is, it would be to our advantage that it, it would be the best thing that could ever happen to us 
for Yah to pull the rug out from under our feet and we can see where we really stand in this country. We can see if black lives really matter in this country. See, right now, we're under the illusion of inclusion. We really feel included. We really feel that we got some power. Praise Yah. But it's an illusion, brothers and sisters. Yaakov's trouble's around the corner. Yahusha said that it's a time such as never was since the world began up to this time, nor ever shall be. So it's talking about how it's going to be for Yaakov, how it's going to be for the children of Yashra'al. So if he said that it's going to be worse than any other time, that's talking it's going to be worse than Jim Crow. It's going to be worse than slave days. I and mean, we could not imagine that. Because like I said, we're under this illusion now. We're under this illusion that we're free and we got all this power and, and that you know, all, these, uh, all these good Gentile folk will just have our back no matter what happens. Praise Yahuwah. It's an illusion, brothers and sisters. Don't you be fooled. Praise Yah. The only safe place for us, hallelujah, is going to be in Yah and Him alone. And Yah's going to make sure that in these last days, he's going to knock the slats out from under us. And he needs to. Praise Yahuwah. Praise Yah. In order that we may look to him and him alone. And all nations are going to turn against us. At some point in time, everybody is going to be against us. Praise Yah. But Yah, would be doing it. Yah is doing us a favor by, by doing that for us. Because we need to find our resting place. We need to stop running from mountain to hill and trusting in this leader, that leader, this movement, that movement, this political party, that political party. You know, one, one of the, you know, one of the, uh, let me try to be nice here. Let me try to be nice here. But one statement that I've heard uh, time and again from our people now. From the Hebrews, you know, that I disagree with no. is that no. uh, if Donald Trump becomes president, I will move out of the country. OK, so people say that if Donald Trump becomes president, I will move out of the country. All right. What if Hillary Clinton becomes president? Oh, OK. Well, hey, life goes on. I'll be comfortable. I'll just keep doing what I'm doing. And I'll see we're under this illusion. Praise Yahuwah. That, that here you have two uh, opposite parties that are you know against one another and one of the parties is for us and one of the parties is against us when they're all in the same gang, brothers and sisters. And we, we will not be any better off with Hillary Clinton as president as Donald Trump as president. See, I can talk this way because I'm not 501c3. <laughs> Praise Yahuwah. So I can talk this way. Hallelujah. We won't be any better off because it's going to be the same Luciferian system that's going to be running the show. Praise Yahuwah. And so if you have that mentality, you need to move out of the country no matter who gets elected. That's true. Praise Yahuwah. Because you're not going to be any better off. Now, when I say I disagree with that, I'm not saying that because I support one or the other. We don't entangle ourselves in the affairs of this life. Praise Yahuwah. But what I'm saying is just allowing ourselves to be fooled into thinking that, that uh, a certain political party uh, has our back and, and are for our better interests. Praise Yahuwah. You know, um, we talk about these mountains and hills and how these organizations that were formed that are supposed to be black organizations that really started and funded by white people. Let's look at the NA, NAACP. For example, now the the NAACP, now they're supposed to be for quote unquote black interests, all right, and because they are so heavily funded by the Democratic Party and by liberal white people, that they cannot come out and take a stand against one of the uh, most destructive forces against so-called black people in America today, and that's abortion. Because a lot of the white people that support and fund that organization are pro-abortion. They can't take a stand against it. And you know what? There are black folk. There are Hebrews that go and they protest at the NAACP conventions. And they protest, say, hey, how come you don't stand against abortion? You all need to have a platform against abortion if you're really for our people. You know what? They, they just hide them. They just don't, they just don't show them 
on there. They block them out and whatnot. You know, and there are people that protest against them for that. That's a prime example of running from mountain to hill. That's a prime example of these, these so-called black movements that are castrated. No testicles. You know, no life in it. I mean, impotent. Praise Yahuwah, because it's not indigenous. In other words, not started by us and funded by us and controlled by us. That's why you can only go so far. And that's why you got to compromise. Praise Yahuwah. And I don't want to discount any of, of the good that they may do you know, in our communities, but I'm just giving you an example here. Of, uh, of what I'm talking about, that, that we're not to look to these mountains and these hills. We're to look to Yah and Yah alone. Praise Yahuwah. And I'm going to show you at the end of this lesson, I'm going to show you what his path is to redemption. Praise Yahuwah. Because all these other paths to redemption that we have tried in time past, they have failed us. Praise Yahuwah. And the ones that we're looking to now are going to fail us. Let's look at this Black Lives Matter movement. Praise Yahuwah. All that movement is is a front for the LBGT movement. Because when you see Black Lives Matter in the forefront in the media doing something big, guess who you see right behind them? LBGT, LBGTQ, right behind them. Gay lesbian movement, transgender, right behind them. And so this is what happens when we make leagues. So this is what happens when we make leagues and we make covenants with the heathen. Look at the kind of stuff we have to accept. That, hey, you know, you all have power and influence and your voice will be heard, but you got to lock arms with this one and that one. And you got to, you know, you got to support things that, that you don't believe in. And you know what? We buy right into it because we want our piece of the pie so bad. Praise Yahuwah. And we have forgotten our resting place. Praise Yahuwah. And see, I believe part of the purpose of that Black Lives Matter movement, and you see how the, the media is using it, it, it's part of the purpose is to harden uh, the other nations against us. Where people are just, be, because of some of the things they see a BLM doing, that they're just getting sick of hearing about us talking about slavery and, and what's happened to us in time past and how the wrongs need to be made right. They don't want to hear it now. And see, the media is making them like that because they're preparing us for a race war, brothers and sisters. Praise Yahuwah. See, you see all this confusion when we run from mountain to hill, forget our resting place when we don't run to Yah. Praise Yahuwah. Turn to Yahu, Jeremiah 17. And I'm going to show you why we are still cursed as a people. I mean, yes, there's the curses of Deuteronomy chapter 28, but I'm going to show you something on top of that. Jeremiah chapter 17, verse 5. Thus saith Yahuwah, Cursed is the man who trusts in man and makes flesh his arm, whose heart turns away from Yahuwah. For he shall be like a shrub in the desert, and shall not see when good comes, and shall inhabit the parched places in the wilderness, a salt land that is not inhabited. Baruch is the man. Blessed is the man who trusts in Yahuwah. And whose trust is Yahuwah. For he shall be like a tree planted by the waters. Which spreads out its roots by the river. And does not see when heat comes. And his leaf shall be green. And in the year of drought he is not anxious. Nor does he cease from yielding fruit. Hallelujah. And so that's, that's uh, another curse added on top of what we already have to deal with is we're trusting in man. We're trusting in the arm of flesh. Praise Yahuwah. We're trusting in these men, these movements that are not leading us uh, to the way of righteousness. Even churches trusting in these pastors and these preachers that, that are not leading us to the way of Yahuwah. They're leading us to destruction because if the blind lead the blind, both shall fall into the ditch. Most of our people in the United States of America today are following blind leaders because they themselves are blind. Running after some prosperity doctrine and just, a, you know, running after the slave master's religion. Try to tell them about the Torah. Praise Yahuwah. And they'll tell you, oh, that's done away with. That's Old Testament. See, that's what our slave masters taught us. They didn't want us reading in the Hebrew scriptures and learning who that's talking about, which is us. Praise Yah. 
But they, they wanted us to learn that slaves be obedient to your masters and all things. That, that's about, about all they preached to us. Just that type of thing. But they didn't teach us the truth of the scriptures. Praise Yahuwah. Praise so even in the religious realm, I'm not just talking about politics. Even in the religious realm, we're, we're running from mountain to hill, being scattered by the false shepherds. Praise Yahuwah. And not coming back to our resting place. And so that's why I thank Yahuwah that he is raising up more and more people that are pointing the lost sheep to our resting place. Praise Yahuwah. Pointing the sheep to the, the way of Yahuwah. Praise Yahuwah. Turn to Deuteronomy, Devarim, Deuteronomy chapter 30. Let me show you. Praise Yahuwah. Let me show you what we need to be doing instead. Instead of running after Black Lives Matter, instead of running after Egyptology, Pan-Africanism, Nation of Islam, 5%, instead of running after this one and that one, civil rights movement, and just uh, believing that this Luciferian government, government is going to put us on equal terms with them someday. Believing in this king's dream, free at last, free at last. It's a false hope, brothers and sisters, that our hope as a nation of people is right here. What I'm about to read you right now. Praise Yahuwah. Deuteronomy chapter 30. We're going to start in verse 1. It's, it says, And it shall be, when all these words come upon you, the barakah, or blessing, in the curse, which I have put before you, and you shall bring them back to your heart among all the Gentiles where Yahuwah your Elohim drives you and shall turn back to Yahuwah your Elohim and obey his voice according to all that I command you today with all your heart, with all your being, you and your children. Then Yahuwah your Elohim shall turn back your captivity and shall have compassion on you and he shall turn back and gather you from all the peoples where Yahuwah your Elohim has scattered you. Let me stop here for a moment. When he says, when it says, turn back to Yahuwah your Elohim and obey his voice. Praise Yahuwah. A lot of people say they hear his voice. A lot of people say Yah talks to them, but he gets more specific. Listen to this. Obey his voice according to all that I command you today. Now who's speaking? Praise Yahuwah. See, this is talking about the commandments that the Most High gave through Masha or through Moses. Praise Yahuwah. And, and he said that what you're going to be brought back to in these last days, what's that these blessings and curses come to mind? Because people are going to preach it to you. Once these blessings and curses come to mind, and then you realize, hey, that's talking about us. Hey, we're the ones that are in that condition. We're the only ones on this earth who that could be talking about. And so you come to a realization of who that's talking about. And then you turn back to Yahuwah. Praise Yah. With all your heart, obey his voice. He said, according to all that I command you today. So according to all the commandments that were commanded through Moses in that day, that's what he's bringing our people back to. See, you're not learning that in church, are you? The slave master's religion is not teaching you that, is it? Praise Yahuwah. But that's exactly what Deuteronomy 30 is talking about. Obey his voice. Same voice that spoke to Masha, spoke to Moses and gave him those commandments. Praise Yahuwah. Same commandments because that he said not to add to them and not to take away. These are eternal, brothers and sisters. Praise Yahuwah. Then he said he would gather us from all places where he scattered us because he himself scattered us in captivity because of the disobedience of our forefathers. He said, I'll scatter you from one end of the earth to the other. Praise Yahuwah. And there you will serve other gods, wood and stone. Praise Yah. And that's exactly what's going on. And we are scattered from one end of the earth to the other. You know what? You go down to you go down to Central America and you know what? You're going to see people that look like us, and they're going to be on the bottom. Go to the Caribbean islands, you're going to see people that look like us, and they're going to be on the bottom. Go to South America, you're going to see people that look like us, and they're going to be on the bottom. Yep. Go to Europe, England, France, Germany, you're going to see people that look like us, and they're on the bottom. Yep. Go to Iran, Iraq, Saudi Arabia, Yemen, you're going to see people that look like us, and they're on the bottom. 
Go to East Asia, Southeast Asia. Got to see people that look like us. They're on the bottom. Why? Because we've been scattered from one end of the earth to the other. Praise Yahuwah and worshiping false gods, worshiping idols. But Yah promises to bring us back, praise Yah, if we repent, if we turn back to him and hear his voice according to all that he spoke even back in this day. Because his words forever, brothers and sisters. Now look at this, verse 4. If any of you are driven out to the farthest parts under the Shamaim, from there, Yahuwah, your Elohim, gathers you, and from there he takes you. You know, we're, we're pretty far away from the... Uh, uh, from the land right now. We're pretty far away from Zion right now. I'd say we're amongst the furthest away. Mm -hmm. People in the United States, Canada, we're way far away. But if any are driven to the furthest parts from there, Yahuwah your Elohim gathers you. From there he takes you. And Yahuwah your Elohim shall bring you to the land which your fathers possess, and you shall possess it, and he shall do good to you, and increase you more than your fathers. And Yahuwah your Elohim shall circumcise your heart, and the heart of your seed, to love Yahuwah your Elohim with all your heart, and with all your being, so that you might live. And Yahuwah your Elohim shall put all these curses on your enemies, and on those who hate you, who persecuted you. And you shall turn back and obey the voice of Yahuwah, and do all his commands, which I command you today. And Yahuwah your Elohim shall make you have excess in all the work of your hand, in the fruit of your body, and in the fruit of your livestock, and in the fruit of your ground for good. For Yahuwah turns back to rejoice over you for good as he rejoiced over your fathers. If you obey the voice of Yahuwah your Elohim to guard his commands and his laws which are written in this book of the Torah, if you turn back to Yahuwah your Elohim with all your heart and with all your being. Hallelujah. And so, brothers and sisters, this may sound pretty simplistic to you. And you, you may say to yourself, if the answer is just written right here in the Bible, then why, why is it so hard? Why is it so hard for us to understand? I mean, we've been in church for hundreds of years and we've, uh, we've been able to read since after slavery time, we've educated ourselves, we're able to read, we have Bibles. Why is it so hard? I'm going to tell you why it's so hard. Praise Yahuwah, because it, this thing is hidden in plain sight. We've had the knowledge before us, you know, from the beginning. It's just, we got to work through all this theology now. We got to work through all this false doctrine and all this junk that we've been taught. Uh, over the over the generations and over the centuries in order that we may see this light clearly we need these blinders taken off praise Yahuwah. and a lot of these blinders were put on us by christianity our people are still keeping pagan holidays like christmas and easter and still tied into this this pagan roman system and giving honor to these these false false gods without even knowing it Praise Yahuwah. Look at the names of the days of the week and the months of the year. You know, the, the month called January, month called February, the day called Monday, day called Sunday. You know, sun and moon. Just worshiping other gods like that. And the, the, these deities that are, that these months of the year and days of the week. And here we just use those names so freely because that's just our culture. Praise Yahuwah. And that's the primary thing that's wrong with Christianity is that it, it, it takes a it, it takes a sliver of this truth here from the scriptures and it mixes it right on in with pagan culture. Mm -hmm. And so here you are calling yourself following the mighty one of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, but but you follow all these pagan cultural practices. You have to understand that the Torah regulates not just spiritual life but culture as well. And see, the commands out of the Torah that seem to be hardest for people to accept are commands that deal with culture. Yeah. See, women don't want to let them britches go. You know, the Torah says that the, the woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. Neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. All who do such are abomination unto Yahuwah. It says a man is not to destroy the corners of his beard. And see, we want to have that clean shaven face and be like the Gentiles and just, you know, be like uh, this culture and whatnot. But Torah regulates every facet of life, not just spiritual life, but culture as well. 
praise Yah, and teaches us to separate ourselves from the world and not engage in these worldly practices. And not only that, but that our vision and our mission should be different. Our vision and our mission should not be to try to achieve equality in the land of our captivity. Brothers and sisters, that's not happening. Our vision and our mission should be, praise Yahuwah, to return to Yahuwah and to help our, help our people to do so as well. Praise Yah, and to get back to Zion and to be restored as the great nation that he had made us to be in the first place. Praise Yahuwah, we should have no other vision or no other mission above that, brothers and sisters, and not be caught up in the affairs of this life. But brothers and sisters, we're talking about running from mountain to hill and just breaking down what that's talking about and what the solution is. Praise Yahuwah, turn back to Yahuwah. Obey his voice. Turn back to his Torah. See, that was the purpose of the Messiah coming, Yahusha, the son of Elohim, to turn us back to that path. And see, we've been, we've been fooled. We've been fooled into thinking that, that Yah sent his son to get us away from that path. Sent his son to get us away from the Torah. Get us on some different path. Praise Yah. Nah, it's the opposite, brothers and sisters. He sent his son, praise Yah, because Yahusha said, I am come in my father's name. Now the father said, I will come and I will search out my lost sheep and bring them back to Zion. And you know what? His son was his instrument in doing so because he came in his father's name. Why? To turn the lost sheep back to their resting place, back to the Torah, the commandments, statutes, and judgments of the Most High. That was the true mission of the Messiah. He said, I am not come, but for the lost sheep of the house of Yashraal. Hallelujah. And so, brothers and sisters, that concludes our new moon celebration. Praise Yahuwah. Let's stop running from mountain to hill. Even some of y'all that are calling yourselves awakened. Praise Yah, still running from mountain to hill, still getting caught up in the politics and, and religion and camps and all this other stuff. Let's turn back to Yahuwah and him alone. Praise Yahuwah. And so please like and share this video and subscribe, praise Yahuwah, to this channel if you haven't done so already. That way you can be notified whenever new videos come out, praise Yahuwah. And so with that, brothers and sisters, I will say, Shalom, praise Yahuwah. Brothers and sisters, there's an announcement that I want to make that we are going to be in Houston, Texas, brothers and sisters, and we're going to be immersing. You know, we're going to be uh, immersing uh, in the name of Yahusha. Hallelujah. And the date for that is going to be the fifth day of the sixth month. And so it's going to be approximately four weeks from now. And so it's going to be on the pagan first day of the week, which they call Sunday, which they separate in honor to their sun god. But it's going to be on the first day of the week. It's going to be the fifth day of the sixth month. We will be in Houston, Texas. We will be immersing. And if you have yet to be immersed, but you're following the way of righteousness now, okay? Because we're not doing anything by religion or routine. Praise Yahuwah. But if you've repented of your sins and you're following after the way of righteousness, Praise Yahuwah. You're following in the footsteps of the master, Yahusha Mashiach, and walking in the Father's Torah, and you want to be immersed, you live near the Houston area, then get in contact with us. Praise Yahuwah. You have our email address down in the description. Praise Yah. Get in contact with us and let us know who you are, and we can get in communication and talk uh, further on this, because we're going to be in Houston, Texas. Praise Yahuwah. There's already a brother that's going to be immersed. Praise Yah. If there's anybody else that, that wants to be immersed, make sure that you make contact with us. Praise Yahuwah. Because that's the, that's the one day that we're going to be available. Praise Yah. While we're in Houston, um, once again, it's going to be the fifth day of the sixth month, which is going to be the first day of the week. Praise Yahuwah. So set that day apart uh, on your calendars. Praise Yah. Make plans. Praise Yahuwah. And, you know, we may even have a special meeting that day. Praise Yah. But I know for sure that we're going to be immersing. 
Praise Yah. And so I know that some of y'all, you may live in the vicinity, maybe within a couple hours of Houston, Texas. So remember that day. Get in touch with us. Praise Yahuwah. And we'd love to meet you face to face. Shalom.